everybody and welcome to another Brush and Bubbles tutorial. Today we're going to be painting a cute dog. This is a really fun painting to do because you can change up your colours, you can colour your background in any shade that you like and you can also paint your dog in any shade that you like as well. So if you want to paint your own dog or if you want to paint it for a family member or a friend who has a dog then you can change up your colours so that it looks like the dog you have in mind. I'm going to start by firstly talking you through what I've got in front of me so you can have the same things to create your painting too. So to start with, I'm using a canvas. It's a stretched canvas on a board and it's an eight by 10 size, but you can use any size or shaped canvas that you like. And if you haven't got a canvas, you can always use a piece of card or even a piece of paper. Next up, I have three different size brushes. I have a really big flat end brush. I then have a medium square flat end brush and then a smaller pointy one. Now you don't need all three of these brushes. I've got them here on standby. I might actually only end up using the two smaller ones, but it's nice to have a few extra ones nearby just in case you want to use them. I've then got some kitchen towel. This is just to dab my brushes on. A cup of water. Over here I have a paper plate and then underneath it I've popped myself another paper plate. So these are going to act as my paint palettes. One of them I'm going to place all of my paint colours into it and the other one I'm going to do all of my mixing in. I then have my pack of acrylic paints. So there's a whole assortment of colours here. But what I would say is you can use any colours that you wish but I would definitely recommend having white and black in your palette. We're going to start by adding our paints to our palette. As you can see here, I've got quite a lot of white paint. This is probably too much. You probably don't need nearly as much as this. I've then got some pink, some yellow, blue, black, and green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my background a turquoise color, and then I'm going to do my dog a different variety of gray shades. So to start with, I'm just going to prepare myself. So I'm going to pop this plate up here and my mixing plate just underneath it. And I'm going to start by mixing up a very, very light grey colour. So what we're going to do with this very light grey colour is we're going to use it to draw out the shape of our dog or our puppy. So I'm just going to pick up my medium paintbrush for this and I'm going to dip it in the water just to loosen up the bristles, giving it a dab on the edge of my cup. And then moving back over to my plate of paints, I'm going to scoop up a couple of scoops of my white. Now I want to mix up a nice amount of this because I'm actually going to use this same very light grey colour as the main base for my dog's body. So if you are wanting to do another colour for your dog's body, if you want to do brown or black or you want to go a bit more abstract and do a pink dog, then you can. But we're just going to add quite a large amount of our white paint over onto our mixing palette. Now to this, we want to add a very tiny, and I mean really tiny amount of black paint. So I just like to dip the corner of my paintbrush into my black, so I've only got a very small amount on there. You can always add more. And I just give that a good mix into my white to create a nice light gray shade. Once you've mixed that all up, what I always recommend doing is just adding a few drops of water into this paint. So I'm not washing off my brush, I'm just picking up some of that water and I'm just going to mix that in really well. As soon as you've mixed it, you can just give your brush a little scrape on the side of your plate just to get rid of any of that excess paint. And we can also give it a nice wash in our water. I like to tap the bristles gently on the bottom of the cup just to lift off any of that excess paint. And then once you've done that, you can just pop it down on your kitchen towel. We'll go back to it later. So this is the fun bit. This is where we're going to paint in our dog. So I'm going to pick up my smaller brush just so I have a little bit more control with this. And what I would say is do not worry if your dog isn't straight, if it's a bit wonky. We want our dog or puppy to have lots of personality. So taking some of this light grey, I'm now just going to start drawing in the shapes of my dog. I'm going to start with the dog's head. Now I want to make sure that I'm leaving enough space for the ears so I'm going to place the dog's head roughly in the middle of the canvas, maybe a little bit lower, and I'm just going to do a circle. Now your circle doesn't need to be a complete circle because we want it to have that personality, we don't want it to be too neat and too straight. So I'm just doing a very rough sort of 
circle of shape and kind of bring it down a little bit more boxy. Now you probably won't be able to see this too much. We want it to be nice and light because we're going to be adding to it. And our background colour will go around this. Once you've painted in the head shape, we're now just going to paint in the body. So I'm going to find sort of either side of this head area. And I'm just going to do a very slightly curved line going all the way down on either side. Again, don't worry if it's wobbly or wonky. I'm now going to work on my ears. So I'm going to do sticking up ears, a little bit like you would find on a French bulldog. But if your dog has got floppy ears or lollopy ears, a bit like a Springer Spaniel or a Cockapoo, you can always do sort of lollopy ears instead. So for my ears, I'm just picking up some of my same colour. And I'm going to start on the right hand side of the head up here. And I'm just going to do a sort of cucumber shape with a little bit of a point at the top just like that so that's going to be my first ear and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side once you've got that main very rough shape of your dog onto your canvas we're just going to wash off our little brush and just make sure your medium brush or your bigger brush is nice and clean as well. I'm going to give mine another wash. We're going to move on now to creating the colour that we want to paint in our background. So this is where you can have some fun because you can do any colour that you want. You might want to do pink, yellow, green, blue, orange, anything that you like. I am going to do a turquoise colour just because I think it will look really nice. So I'm going to mix up that colour now. So picking up my clean, slightly bigger brush, I'm going to move back over to my paint palette and again I'm going to start with some white as my base. So I'm just going to pick up some white and just move it over to an area of my paint palette. Now we want to make sure we're mixing up enough colour that's going to cover this whole background. So all the way around the lines that we've already drawn. So I'm just making sure I've got enough paint as my base just because I want my background to be fairly pastel so not too bright. And then I'm going to pick up a scoop of my blue. Just going to pop it there next to it and a scoop of my green and add it to it as well. Now I'm going to give this white, blue and green a really good mix and see what colour I come up with. So there I have a lovely turquoise colour. What I'm going to do again is just pick up a few scoops of my water and just drop it in just like we did with our first colour and I'm going to just really mix that water into my paint it just keeps the paint nice and fluid for when we come to paint on our canvas so this is the fun bit because what we're going to do is we're going to take this color or your color of choice and we're just going to carefully start filling in the whole background so you can use any paintbrush that you like i quite like using this one but if you want to be really super careful as you get into any of the nooks or crannies of your dog you can always switch over to your smaller brush I'm just doing nice gentle swoops. You can go in any direction if you want to be quite choppy and messy with your paintbrush and be a bit more abstract, you can. Or you can be nice and smooth. We just want to be really careful as we're bringing this colour up to meet the shape of our dog. So you don't want to go over the lines that you've already drawn because we want that to stay nice and blank so we can go back in and paint it afterwards. So I'm just being super careful, as you can see, I'm just dragging my paintbrush down and around wherever I'm getting to those edges where those grey lines are. Just take your time, there's no rush. We're just going to enjoy this part, just filling in all of that background with whichever colour that you like. Once you've covered up all of your background we're just going to have a little break just to let this dry so what you can do is give your brush a really really good wash if you want to you can always change up your water if you want to replenish it 
You can either wait five minutes to let the background dry, or if you have a hairdryer handy, you could always just give it a very gentle hair dry with, on a low heat, and that will help it dry slightly quicker as well. So when your background is nice and dry, we can now move back over to our light gray color and our medium brush, and we're just going to fill in all of this inside section of our dog. So you can use any size paintbrush that you like. Again, it's quite nice if you want to do a little dance between the medium one and the tiny one, if you just want to get into all of the smaller, more delicate areas, you can. But I'm just gonna pick up some of this gray color and I'm just gonna carefully just start filling in all of this section. Now, what's quite nice about this, if your background is nice and dry, you can overlap this color ever so slightly, just carefully on the edge just to make sure you're bringing this color right up to meet your background color so i'm just dragging my paintbrush down and around just swooping it around just so i'm getting my gray color right up to my background shade again don't worry if this is a bit messy you can be a little bit more abstract with this if you want to you don't have to be too neat but if you want to there is always the option to just take it really slowly and carefully we're just going to spend a couple of minutes now just focusing on this colour, filling it all in. And once we've filled all of that section in, we can just give our brush a really good wash in the water. While we wait for the inside part of our dog to dry, we can now move back over to our paint palettes and mix up our next colour. So for my next colour, I'm going to mix up a very pale pinky peach shade. Now, I want to place this pinky peach shade inside the centre of my dog's ears. So I'm just going to mix up that colour now. So picking up my clean, bigger brush, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my white paint, maybe two scoops or one scoop. And I'm just moving it over to a spare part of my palette. And then to this white, I just want to add a tiny dab of pink and a tiny dab of yellow. So that's just mostly white, tiny dab of the pink, tiny dab of the yellow, and then mix it all together. So this has given me a nice, very pale, almost beige colour. So I want to make it slightly more pinky, but if you like this colour, you can stick with it. But I'm just going to add a little bit more pink to my mixture and stir it in. So I'm going to pop my medium brush down and I'm going to move over to my tiny little brush now. So I'm going to pick up some of my pinky peach shade just with this small brush and I'm going to move over to my painting and I'm just going to draw in the shapes that I want this to be on the ears. So I'm still following the same kind of shape of the ears, I'm just doing it smaller inside. So I'm just going to draw a line just in that centre, keeping with the same shape, bringing it round all the way down to sort of meet where the head would meet the ears. So I'm just going to curve this round slightly like this. Then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side, just following the ear round, picking up more paint whenever you need it. Again, don't worry if it's wobbly or wonky. And then once you've got those two shapes painted onto your puppy, I'm just going to pick up some more of this pink and I'm just going to fill in the middle bits just nice and carefully. If you feel like it's blending in too much and your paint underneath is still a bit wet, you might just want to wait a moment. You might want to dry it with a hairdryer or sometimes I think it actually looks quite nice when it blends in with the light grey underneath. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Whenever you've done one ear, you can move on and do the other ear. As soon as you've done that, we can just spend a moment washing off our two brushes in our water. Whenever you're ready, we're going to move back over to our paint palettes and mix up our next colour. So for my next shade, I want to create another grey colour, but I want it to be darker than the first one we did, because this first one is very, very light. So I've actually got quite a lot of my first colour left, so I might use some of this as my base 
If you haven't got any of this left, do not worry. We can just start again. And you, all you wanna do to start again is just add some white to a spare area of your palette. So picking up my medium brush again, I'm just gonna scoop up a few scoops of this light gray. Again, if you haven't got any of that light gray, just scoop up some white. And all we're gonna to do to this is just to add a tiny little bit of black. Now, again, we want to add the black really carefully because it's so pigmented. We just want to make sure that we're controlling the color that we're making. So I've just added a little bit and I'm gonna mix it in until I get a slightly darker gray color than I started with. So I can see here that it's definitely darker than my first color and that's what I want. So I'm just gonna pop my slightly bigger brush down and I'm gonna move back over to my smaller one. And with this color, I'm just gonna pick it up with my small brush. And this is gonna act as the background for where our dog's nose is gonna be. So I'm gonna place my dog's nose in the lower half of its head here. And I'm just gonna draw a sort of circle, but it doesn't need to be completely round. In fact, it's slightly more of this shape. And I'm gonna draw it here on my paint palette so you can see. So it almost comes round, not a complete circle, it's almost a little bit like a triangle shape, but with very curved edges. So you can give it a practice if you want on a spare bit of paper or on a spare plate if you want. And whenever you're ready, we're just gonna move over to our canvas and draw it in. So I'm just focusing it here, swooping it round. You can always start smaller and you can always make it bigger. That's always my rule. Much easier to make it bigger than it is to take it away. Once you've got that shape, you can carefully fill it in with the same color. And if you don't like that shape, you can just do a circle instead if you want to. This is gonna act as that background for the nose and the mouth. So while I'm working with this same colour, what I want to do is I just want to add a little cute patch on my dog's tummy. So picking up this same colour, I'm just going to draw in that patch now. So this can be any shape that you want. It's quite nice if it's very wobbly. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to wobble this line down so it comes off the edge of the canvas at the bottom. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. It doesn't need to be the same on each side either. We just want a nice sort of wobbly patch on our puppy's tummy and then once you've got that shape in you can just fill it in so I'm going to go back to my medium brush picking up the same colour and I'm just going to carefully fill in this little splotch. I'm now going to move back over to my paint palette and I'm going to mix up my last grey colour so again because I've got so much of my first colour left I'm just going to scoop some of it up and I'm just going to move it to a little area where I've got some space Again, if you haven't got any of that left, you can just pick up some more white paint. And all we're gonna do is the exact same thing as we've done last time. This time, we just want to add a tiny little bit more black. We want to darken this color up even more. But what I would suggest doing is just adding the black paint very gradually because you can always add more. So as long as this color is darker than the one we've just painted on our painting, then you're all good to go. I'm gonna pop my bigger brush down again, moving back over to my small one. And I'm gonna use this slightly darker gray now just to create a little patch on one of the eyes. So one of his eyes is gonna sit on top of this patch. So again, I can be quite wonky with this, just like we were with the patch down here. And I'm just going to do a little sort of splodge shape just on this top left hand section where the eye is going to be and I'm not going to go over the nose I'm leaving a little gap between this splodge and the nose once you've got that shape in there again we can just fill it in so you might want to fill it in with your small brush if you prefer that or you might want to swap back over to another brush and use that it's completely personal preference whichever one you prefer When we're happy with our eye splodge, we can give our two brushes a nice wash in the water because we're now going to move on to our finishing touches, which is drawing in the eyes, the nose and the mouth. For our last finishing touch of the painting, we're just going to use our tiny little brush and some pure black paint. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up some of my black, just moving it to anywhere spare on your plate, just because I like to add a little bit of water to this, a few drops and give it a really, really good mix just to give it a nice inky consistency. So then taking a little bit of this black paint and just dabbing off any excess so you don't have too much on your brush, we can just start by painting in the dog's eyes. So one of the eyes is going to be in this section here on the little grey area and the other one's going to be just on the lower part of this patch. And we're just going to do little circles for this. So again, I would always say start slightly smaller and then you can always make them bigger. Again, remember our rule, it doesn't matter if they're wonky or wobbly. Once you've sort of painted in a rough sort of circular shape, you can then fill it in. So I like to do one, keeping it fairly small, and then do the other one. So you want the same side, but just here. And then you can sort of decide if you want them to be a little bit bigger afterwards. And once you're happy with the eyes, we're going to move over and paint in the nose. So the nose isn't a complete circle. It's a little bit more of an oval shape on its side, so a little bit like this sort of shape. And then we'll fill it in, and then we'll do a little sort of smiley mouth underneath it. A bit like that. So if you want to, you can practice on a piece of paper again. And this time we're gonna focus the nose in the patch that we've already drawn in here. So I'm gonna keep it on the sort of higher section the nose and again I'm going to keep it fairly small to start with just a little oval shape on its side and then you can almost take a little step back if you like and decide if you want the nose to be bigger or if you're happy with it, you can leave it like that. And the next part we're gonna do is the mouth. So what I would say, as a little tip from me, is when you pick up your black paint, you just wanna make sure it isn't too gloopy like this. You wanna make sure you've only got a little bit on there because you can always pick up some more. So I just like to dab off the excess on the side of my plate and just make sure I've sort of brought the brush to a nice point, just so it helps us. So then going back here, I'm going to find the middle of the nose and I'm just going to do a line going down, not too far. So about there, maybe even slightly lower, it depends on how big your dog is. And then afterwards, we're just going to do the little shapes going up. So this almost looks like a little flick going round and then up to give it a nice smiley face and then you can do the same on the other side and there you have your french bulldog painting you can also sign your masterpiece if you want to as well i always suggest doing your name or initials or a signature in the bottom right or left hand corner of your painting Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you did like this video, then please do give us a little thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to our channel, we bring you new tutorials all the time so you can get creative from the comfort of your own house. Lots of love from me and the whole of the Brush and Bubbles team. Thanks everyone, bye.